Hi students, in this video we are going to discuss the structure of neurons and nerves. This is the second part of our first chapter that is sensations and responses. So let's move to the tutorials. In this video we are going to learn about the neurons and nerves. So this is the second part of our first chapter sensations and responses. Ariyanam Pradhirikyanam Nurla Namada Adhita chapter le Randamte Bhagamana uh, video lulada, Nadi Koshang Le Kurchum, Nadi Gala Kurchumana Namazila, Pradivadi Kam Pona. We know that all the various biological functions like respiration or locomotion or reproduction or circulation, digestion, all these processes are controlled and coordinated by our nervous system. Namalde, Vivithanglai, Shadidia Prothangle, Niendrikim, Ego Pikin Chaina, Namade, Nervous System. Okay, for example, now you are watching this video. While watching this video, you are seeing the pictures, you, you can read the text over here, you can identify the colors, at the same time you are listening my voice or you, are, you can hear my voice, you can see whatever is happening around you, okay. All these various functions are controlled and coordinated by our nervous system. So we can simply call nervous system as a multitasker. So in order to perform all these uh, functions or in order to do its function, perfectly the nervous system is built with a special type of cell known as the neurons or nerve cells so we can define a neuron or nerve cell as a structural and functional unit of nervous system okay so structure of a typical neuron so neuron is an animal cell and at the same time it's a special type of cell or it is a special cell okay so special cell mean if a cell is performing any functions than the uh, normal one so that type of cells are known as specialized cell so neuron is performing some special function than the normal one we can call neuron as a special cell okay so we will see what are the parts of the neuron to help them to perform its special task okay so we will see one by one what are the parts and functions of each part First is it has a cell body, then dendron, dendrites, axon, axonite, myelin sheath, nodes of Ranvir, and synaptic nerve. These are the main parts of a typical neuron. Now we will see what are the functions of each part, how they are helping them to perform its task. First is the cell body. Cell body is otherwise called the soma. You can see the spherical part. Okay. So the spherical part of the neuron is known as the cell body. Like any other cell, it is also provided with the nucleus, the cytoplasm, Golgi bodies, mitochondria. Okay, all these cell organelles are also can be seen in the cell body. Then the second part is dendrons. These short cytoplasmic extension, the short branches from the cell body is called dendron. So at the end, the dendrons are branched and rebranched to form fine filaments, and these branches are called dendrites. Dendrons and dendrites are performing same function, that is, they are carrying the impulses from the neighboring neuron to the cell body. Totadula neuronal impulses ne messages ne e neuron like kundurna dharma mana dendrons and dendrites. Now we will move to the next part that is about axon. We can see a very long filament from the cell body. Okay, so this longest filament which is originating from the cell body is known as axon. And the function of axon is to carry impulse from the cell body to the outside. Okay, now at the end or at the tip, the axon again branches to form fine filaments, and these filaments are known as axonite. Then at the end of this axonite, you can see tiny button like structures, tiny, tiny bulges are there. These tiny knobs or these knob like structures are known as synaptic knob you have to learn about the synapse uh, in a couple of minutes so that time uh, you will see what is synapse and how it is helping the axon so these tiny fine filaments at the end of axonite is known as synaptic knob the synaptic knob is filled with a particular kind of chemical substance which is known as a neurotransmitter this chemical substance are actually helping in transmitting nerve impulse from one neuron to the next Next is about myelin sheath. Look at this neuron. You can see axon has a covering. 
the dendron or uh, the cell body dendrite these parts are not covered but axon is covered okay axon is covered with a particular material and that covering is called myelin sheath so it is a lipid rich membrane kolippu niranja oru staramana aa kolippu niranja oru aavaranam kondana axon ne podinjittullathu okay and this axon if you are looking close to it you can see that the axon is not completely covered with myelin sheath alle axon ne mottathil podinjonde myelin sheath undayittilla in between you can see interruptions or non myelinated areas can be seen this non myelinated areas are known as nodes of ranvir or myelin sheath gaps okay the regular interruptions of myelin sheath is called nodes of ranvir appo biology padikkumbo tharalam terms unfamiliar aanthala terms namukku kaanan kariyum appo adinokka kaaranam onnile ee perugal അത് കണ്ടുപിടിച്ച സയന്റിസ്റ്റിന്റെയോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അത് കണ്ടുപിടിച്ച സ്ഥലത്തിന്റെ അതും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഏതെങ്കിലും ഗ്രീക്ക് ലാറ്റിൻ ഒറിജിൻസ് ഒക്കെ ആയിരിക്കും അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഈ പേരുകൾ നമുക്ക് അത്ര ഫെമിലിയർ അല്ലാത്തത് ദീസ് ബയോളജിക്കൽ നെയിംസ് ആർ യൂഷ്വലി ഗിവൺ ആഫ്റ്റർ ദ നെയിം ഓഫ് ദ സയന്റിസ്റ്റ് ഓർ ദ നെയിം ഓഫ് ദ പ്ലേസ് ഫ്രം വെയർ വി ഹാവ് ഒബ്ടൈൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഓർ ഇറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി ഹാവിങ് സം ഗ്രീക്ക് ഓർ ലാറ്റിൻ ഒറിജിൻ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് വൈ ദീസ് ടേംസ് ആർ സംടൈംസ് അൺഫെമിലിയർ ടു അസ് ബട്ട് ഡോൺ വറി വൺ വെൻ വി നോ ദ മീനിങ് ദൻ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി ഈസി ഫോർ അസ് so like that you can see here nodes of ranvir nodes of ranvir is given the name after the scientist we will, we will see who is this ranvir louis anton ranvir he was a french pathologist and anatomist who discovered the gaps in the myelin sheath that is why we have given the name to that places the nodes of ranvir now we have to learn something more about the myelin sheath now we are going to see that one okay you can see one axon over here look at this the axon is covered with a shiny white material this material is the myelin sheath okay hmm? this myelin sheath is made up of a special type of cell known as schwann cell schwann cell got his name after the scientist theodor schwann he was a german physiologist who discovered the myelin sheath around the axon so myelin sheath has got the name after the scientist theodor schwann okay schwann cells and oligodendrocytes in your textbook one more term is given along with schwann cells that is oligodendrocyte now we are going to see uh, what is what is oligodendrocyte and schwann cells and what are their functions look at this nervous system we know that the nervous system is made up of neurons but along with neurons we can see certain other cells also look at this picture you can see that two neurons are there and uh, surrounding these two neuron you can see certain special cells like astrocytes or microglial cells or oligodendrocytes or schwann cells all these cells are known as glial cells or neuroglial cells they are non neuronal cells because they are not performing any transmission of impulses or anything instead they are given with certain other functions like uh, they are giving Uh, support to the neuron or they are holding the neurons in its place or they are supplying nutrients and oxygen to the uh, neurons or they are giving nourishment to the neuron or they are giving us an insulation covering or a protective covering around the neuron or they will destroy the pathogens and remove dead neurons okay so oligodendrocytes and schwann cells are examples of these glial cells and both of them are doing the same function that is they are giving myelin sheath around the axon their function is same myelination of axon but at the same time there is some difference that means the schwann cells are giving myelination to the axon of peripheral nervous system whereas oligodendrocyte are giving the myelination to the central nervous system okay so that's the similarity and difference between schwann cells and oligodendrocytes now let's see what is gray matter and white matter if you look at this picture this is a picture of a real brain and you can see that the outside a part of the brain is cut and removed and you can see this part is shady okay and this part is white in color this shady area is known as a gray matter and the white region or the white part is known as a white matter the two shades or two colors are here because of the abundance or the presence or absence of myelinated nerve fiber so in the brain or in the spinal cord where myelinated nerve cells are present in abundance is called the white matter and the part where non myelinated nerve cells are present is called the gray matter 
that's about gray matter and white matter now we are going to see what is the function of myelin sheath uh, the myelin sheath has two main functions number one it protects the nerves from other electrical impulses or it insulates the axon second point it increases the speed at which electrical impulses propagate along the myelinated fiber now we know that the messages are transmitting or traveling through the axon in the form of electrical impulses if you examine an axon a part of axon you can see that outside outside of this axon membrane is lined with positive charges and inside it is lined with negative charge because of the presence of certain proteins and ions okay so this is this is a condition of a resting neuron when when the impulse is not transmitting through it the neuron or the axon will look like it outside will be positive charge inside is negative but when the axon is excited or when the axon is transmitting the stimulus the charges will get reversed that means the positive charge the positive side will become negative and the negative side will become positive okay so the first function of myelin sheath is to protect the neuron from other electrical impulses so one neuron will be surrounded by many other neurons so all these neurons are having these positive and negative charges these charges should not interfere each other that is why the neuron is protected or covered with an insulation cover known as the myelin sheath second point it increases the speed at which electrical impulses propagate along the myelinated fiber we know that this myelinated area is insulated through that the charges cannot pass so what is happening there is the non myelinated area which is known as a nodes of ranvel so the impulses are moving from one node to the next like a jumping action okay so in that way the impulses can travel in a fastest rate that is why we uh, that is why we said that myelin sheath increases the speed of propagation of impulses through it now we are going to see what is synapse synapse is a junction between one axon terminal of one neuron to the dendrite of the next neuron okay so uh, you can see that here is one neuron it is connected with the next neuron one after the other okay so when the impulses are transmitted through this axon it will be given to the next neuron through the synapse so it is a junction between two neurons so this transmission of impulse is done with the help of special chemical substances known as uh, neurotransmitters okay for example acetylcholine is an example of a neurotransmitter this neurotransmitter will help in the transmission of the impulses from one neuron to the next neuron so we can say that synapse and neurotransmitter will help in the transmission of impulse from one neuron to the next neuron now we are going to see the types of neurons based on the function neurons are classified into three types sensory neuron motor neuron and interneuron okay, okay they are having some structural differences because they are doing different functions first is sensory neuron okay so here the sensory neuron are taking the information from our sense organs or the receptor organs to the central nervous system that is brain and spinal cord the second is motor neuron motor means doing some work so motor neurons are convey the commands to muscles glands and organs now, once the brain and spinal cord receive that uh, messages the they they, were, they are sending some commands or orders uh, to the body organs to the muscles to perform some actions so these messages or these commands are transmitted through the motor neuron and the third group is interneuron so we have placed interneuron in between because it is carrying the information from one neuron to the other so it is acting like a mediator okay it can take the messages from sensory neuron to motor neuron or motor neuron to the sensory neuron that is why we will call them as the interneuron that is about the three types of neurons and their functions now we are going to discuss about nerves nerve is made up of a group of nerve fibers or axons surrounded by a sheath of connective tissue look at this picture you can see many neurons over here many nerve cells are here all these nerve cells are joined together or connected together and form a long fiber this fiber is called nerve okay so these nerves are conducting impulses towards or away from the nervous system types of nerves based on the functions 
that is based on the direction of the transmission of impulses nerves are classified into three types sensory nerve motor nerve and mixed nerve first is the sensory nerve it is otherwise known as the afferent nerve this type of nerves carries the impulses from various receptor organs to the central nervous system whereas the motor nerves are there they are otherwise known as efferent nerves these nerves carry the impulses from brain and spinal cord to the various parts of the body there is a third group of nerve this type of nerves are known as the mixed nerve this mixed nerve contain both the sensory nerve and motor nerve so they can carry the impulses from the brain and spinal cord to the various parts of the body or from the various uh, organs to the brain and spinal cord so that is all about this video on neurons and nerves so thanks for watching the video uh, please give your suggestions in the comment box and subscribe the channel for latest tutorials